What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Island Hopper TV. Let's see if we can fix this lighting. Obviously, it's kind of screwy right now, and uh, that's never good, is it? We got a big light behind me. Let me see if I can zap that thing off. All right. Well, the lighting's still fairly uh, screwy, but I'm wearing my Bitcoin shirt, so we'll let it fly, right? Anyways, I'm going to make a video. Hopefully, this video live feed transmission goes through. The reason I do these live feeds is because there's no rendering and all that. And uh, it's it should be, in 2018, possible to stream from major metropolises like Tokyo. So let's hope this one uh, goes through. But I wanted to share some things because people ask how it's possible and how it can be done. And I told this story previously about the four-hour work week, right? It was a book. And in that book, you know, it's not it's not like the Bible. It's not like uh, this, you know, the, I don't know, the Quran or whatever, you know, the Magna Carta, or the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution. But it was a book that did have uh, an impact on the way that I uh, perceived things and saw it took the cap off of potential. So I'm a very, uh, I like sky's the limit anything. So if I get a job, I'd rather work in a sky's the limit environment because that's going to push me to do more. So I like a commission, especially if it's something that I can be successful at. If it's commission and I suck at it, then I know I don't like commission. I like hourly. Right. But, um, in life, in America, especially you can do whatever you really want and you can start your own business. Even if you're working for someone right now, you could start up something on the side and, the way that it's possible is through the internet. So the internet is really what's making this possible because it's connecting borders and making it possible for people to do business globally and uh, run a drop shipping business, run a social media page, run a YouTube channel, um, do Bitcoin, do cryptocurrency, do whatever you like to do, right? These are just some things that I've participated in. Um, when, when I first got into uh, working online, I was doing blogging. I was creating a website. And that was my first real taste. And that took about a year to understand. So you got to give these things time to mature. And you got to also, you know, that's why I'm saying don't quit your day job just yet and go full time on this. Kind of get some get some experience on building this business that you're trying to build that's going to essentially allow you to become a digital nomad. Now, what I always recommend is having more than one income. In fact, I say try to have at least five uh, income streams. OK, so you want to like if you're going to build a YouTube channel, have YouTube paying you out, whether it be $300 a month or $1,000 a month. That's one stream of income. Then you have, right now, you might have your main job. Then you might have a, a drop shipping business on the side that's bringing in an extra thousand, one thousand five hundred. Then you might have, uh, I mean, it, it, you. I, I mean, we could, the list can go on as to what you could possibly do. Uh, maybe you have a client that you're assisting with something. Maybe you also teach yoga, or maybe you also teach, uh, workout exercise and that's creating an income stream maybe you have you're invested in bitcoin and cryptocurrency and you're making some residual income off your investments that you got in and early so looking for so the big key here is also looking for industries that are evolving you don't want to be late to the show right because those people who are late to the show they've already missed the opportunity the people who are early the early adopters are the ones who, who make take the best uh or make the most of it right so in this case uh, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, it's a it's a it's a developing industry. If you can get in early enough, uh, and you're willing to hold it out, you know you you can also set up a pretty nice. Uh, you can potentially set something up nice for yourself there. But the the main thing is being able to work from a cell phone. So yeah, it's cool to have a laptop, but my goal is not to carry around a big bulky laptop. It's to work from this. So your goal in your mind, what you're manifesting is, is a work schedule that allows you to work like this. Well, you'd say, how do you do that? Well, you need to communicate with your team. So if you're a team builder, so one of the things that I do is I build teams and I coordinate teams and I'm basically now just a human resources manager. But before I was doing that, I, I don't call myself a human resources manager, but when I, when it comes to managing teams, being that I manage several different teams, uh, teams of 10, teams of 20, different clients and this and that, um, I had to first do all the work that I asked my people to do. So you have to, 
So when you're engineering the system, you have to be willing to get in the trenches. I did that. I did that. The the labor work, the sweat equity, you know, for a couple of years. But w- once you get once you get that experience, then you can, you know, then you got to evolve, right? You got to move on to the next. You can't always stay in senior year of high school. At some point, you got to go to college, and then at some point, you got to graduate from college and go on to the next. And then at some point, you got to go from the laborer or the low level manager to an executive. Well, some people just stay at the at the same job for 30 years at the same pay rate. And that's fine too. But if you're trying to do what I'm doing, which is travel around the world, your goal is to work from a cell phone and manage things that way. So when you're managing your team, okay, you're going to need applications like Skype. You know, you're going to need to have all your information logged in a safe place. You're probably going to need one of these, right? an external hard drive using a cloud. If you're going to use a cloud, you better make sure everything's secure, right? So external hard drives, the problem with that, you're going to have to make sure that external hard drive is also getting backed up consistently. Where are you backing that up? Um, so traveling, living or being able to travel around the world is one thing, right? So you could travel around the world and, and, you know, not be making any income, but the, the ideal situation is to have income coming in while you're traveling, right? If anyone's out there, if this is coming in clear, if you guys could give me a like. So far, I've heard no comments and no uh, likes, which makes me think this might be actually lagging. We've been having this problem lately. Oh, yeah. Um, Well, we got a like, okay. All right, so someone's out there. All right, well, I'll keep going. So, yeah, you basic you basically need to find a way to make to have income coming in. Like I said, the more revenue streams you get, whether it be one, one is one is enough at first, right? But you know, the ideal situation is to have more money coming in than you have going out. So if let's just say when you're traveling around, you might spend uh I don't know, maybe you have a budget of $200 a day. You take 200 times 30, how much is that per month, right? So, I mean, that's going to come out. What is 200 times 30? I want to say that's around about, well, I don't even know. I can't even do the math right now. Can someone out there tell me what 200 times 30 is? Oh, geez. It's somewhere around about $10,000 a month is basically what I would say. So you got to make more than $10,000 a month. Right now, this YouTube channel does not make me ten thousand dollars a month. It doesn't even make me a thousand dollars a month. I mean, it's more than anything. It's just something to do late at night uh, after I've gone out for dinner and had a a beer or two. Some of you guys would say, "You ever heard about going to get a girlfriend?" <laughs> you know, that's another thing. So, uh, of course, I would love to share these moments with a special somebody, but. Also, part of it is because I'm I'm still going through this research and development phase where I've got to be able to cover a lot of ground really fast and efficiently. Okay, thank you. He said, oh, Shibu, Shibu Republic. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to hang out with him tomorrow. $6,000. Thank you. So, yeah, you need to be able to make about $6,000, I'd say, if you're budgeting $200 a day. Um, but, uh, you, you know, If I bring a girlfriend with me, you know, that's going to slow me down as far as doing that. So that means I'm going to have to make more money. Right. So if I'm going to if I'm going to be doing traveling the world with two people, I need more money and we need to be on the same page, which is ideal for me. I'd love to be sharing uh, every night with uh, a love, a loved one. Right. But it's not my situation right now. So uh, and, and it's partly because I manifested this. I choose to because I have a lot on my plate right now that I want to explore once I, once I sow my oats, so to speak, then I'll be able to settle down and do all that. Right. So if you're one of those young people out there, maybe you're not young, maybe you're like me 35 and you're like, Hey, uh, Hey, what's going on? Aloha state of mind. You know, I'm 35. Most people my age are already married. I still have a lot. I was in the military for eight and a half years. So when I got out of the military, I felt like I had a lot to do because I felt like that just put my whole life on hold, like traveling the world, starting businesses and all that. So um, it's it's all good. It it was a great experience and it um, 
gave me a lot of confidence to travel the world. That's for sure. But uh, even if you weren't in the military, you don't you don't need to know you don't need to uh, have been in the military in order to feel confident to travel the world. The most important thing is to know that most of the world is pretty safe. And um, sure, you're going to have situations where people are not going to be too uh, happy to see you in their country. Blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, that's just that that happens, and you just move on. You know, it's just like uh, it's, if someone uh, says something negative to you on the on the streets in or America, you you just shrug it off and you keep pushing. So the big thing is have the confidence, have the income, be lightweight, be a minimalist. Set your situation up now so that in two years from now, you're able to work from one of these. Okay. That's, that's basically the, a brief synopsis of how you can make this work. If you, if, if you don't want to make $6,000 a month uh, because you think that's a little bit too much, then trim your, uh, trim your daily cost down. $200 is, is a fairly, that means it, it allows me $100 a night for a hotel and $100 a day for petty cash spending money, right? So, um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about uh, my travels and how, how I make it possible and how I'm able to keep going and doing this, feel free to ask um, because that's why I make these videos is to share the experience and hope to inspire uh, some of you guys to go out there and live your uh, dreams of travel and whatever you want to do. Live in Hawaii, it doesn't matter. Because you know what? A lot of people have encouraged me along the way. And without that mentorship, and just that boost of confidence, how would I have ever been able to believe in myself to go? I mean, it's a daunting task to think to go to a foreign country and, and all by yourself, right? I mean, that's a very daunting task, especially if you're in your 20s and you've never done it before. But now it's not as daunting because I've done it. And so I'm saying it can be done. So anyways, thank you to Shubia Republic. Been following your channel, still not totally clear on how you make your income. Just tuned in. Hope you didn't cover that. Yeah, sure, I can answer that. So, uh, like I was saying previously, I have uh, I, I started multiple different businesses. The goal for me was to have five incomes, five income streams. So, uh, because what ended up happening was when I started my business, when I first got on the service, I only had one income. I only had one business. But when that business started to go toe up or started to calm down during off seasons, where, where was I getting income from? So if I was too dependent on one income stream as a small business owner, as someone who was an entrepreneur, I, I discovered really quickly that it's better to have more than one. And then I discovered that because markets go like this and you need a, a nice reserve, it's pretty good to have five income streams. And you can get really creative with how you do that with a YouTube channel, with a blog, with a agency, with a consultant uh, kind of system that you do. Like one of the things that I do is I manage teams. I put teams together uh, just through networking. And those teams are specialized in things that are digital. There you go, dividends. And like I was saying, it's Bitcoin. Bitcoin's one of those things that you can start investing in and potentially uh, get a leg up on the rest of the uh, world. So, uh, it's it's not really a competition. Uh, what it is is how do you make it possible to be able to live, to pay your bills, make actually build wealth, cover all your your traveling expenses. You know what I mean. So even that's why one of the one of the things that I do I'm always filming. So if I'm traveling by myself, you know I'm I'm meeting people along the way, of course. But if I'm walking through a park. I'll have a camera out and I'll be filming that and I'll be putting that in a video library. I'll be building a video library because that's kind of like nowadays video footage is like internet gold. So, I mean, it's just think outside the box is how you can make money on the internet. Like I was saying earlier, drop shipping. One of the things that I did when I first went to Thailand is I went around to um, these manufacturing companies trying to set up trade partnerships, seeing what I could manufacture very cheap and ship to the United States. Some of the unique things that I discovered, like, uh, in Thailand, they have this very dark black hair, right? So uh, when the women, they cut their hair, it they, you know, there's like this much hair and they import that to the United States and some women in the United States go get these hair extensions, right? And Thai women have very nice black hair. And so that, that was, I, my sister was uh, 
a uh, what is it? Uh, salon. She works at a salon. I was telling her, I was like, how much do hair extensions go for uh, in the United States? And she was saying some blah, blah, some big number. And I was like, okay, because I can get a bunch of hair extensions right here at this Thai market. So that's part of it. Like what, when you're going to, uh, when you, when you go to Philippines, what's the resource that you can export? Well, in Philippines, you could maybe if you like coconut water and you see, there's a lot of coconuts that are just sitting on the floor or ground, not being used. There's a business opportunity. Maybe you could start the next big coconut water extract company or coconut oil or palm oil or something like that. So it's how, when you're, it's finding, it's finding ways to be resourceful while you're overseas. It doesn't necessarily have to be just working online with a blog or YouTube channel. It's because you can set up that communication online, right? You could go back to Oklahoma. You could communicate on, on Skype with the guy who owns the plant, the, the, the coconut farm. And you're communicating with them and you're saying, hey, can you get me this, this and this for this price? How much is it going to cost? You know, so it's just things like that. When you're traveling, you got to be thinking like that. And I'm always thinking like that. Uh, and that's that's part of the reason why I'm still traveling solo is because I need to have that focus. Rob says, I'm 24, thinking of moving to Oahu. I've been selling a lot of my stuff on eBay to save. Okay. So what are you going to do when you get to Oahu? Do you know what you're going to do for work? Oahu is a really expensive place. It's definitely it definitely can be done. So there's no doubt about that. There's no there's no doubt that you can move to Oahu and get it done. It's just um, when you come back, are you going to have credit card debt or anything like that? You know that you're going to be stuck with, but it's a life experience, so it's valuable. The life experience is valuable. The first few times I was traveling, I was traveling on a credit card. Okay, I was not always traveling around the world, uh, getting paid to travel, right? I wasn't always making income to travel. I, you know, you gotta, you gotta get out there. You gotta experience it. You gotta live on the road a little bit. Then you start getting really strategic. Then you start thinking clever and you start thinking about ways to get, to get things really moving. Yeah. Looking for a job first. Yeah. I mean, so you might not, you might just find the job there, you know, uh, Shibuya says, this is why Cortez went to Brazil trade. You're talking about uh, Hernan Cortez? They were looking for gold. Yeah, I mean, if you even take it back, studying history can be really valuable. Just like if you study the, I mean, I just went to China, so I learned a lot about colonialism and why communism is in place in China. Mao Zedong, uh, you know, the, the, the Communist Party of China is in place to stop the bourgeoisie, which were the colonial people, the the imperial powers of the, the Western world, uh, Europeans basically who wanted to um, co colonize basically the whole area. And what were they doing? The, the British East India Company and all these different companies uh, were basically exploiting the resources of the land, whether it be silk or whatever. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to demonize anybody, but I'm saying that's what put uh, communism in place was a war against the bourgeoisie. Yeah, I've had roommates in Hawaii. But um, I don't think you need a roommate in Hawaii. I mean, I've slept, I've also had a, I've also done like a lot share where there was like a married couple and then there was me in a house and uh, we were on the same property, but two different cabins. What's the best way to use money to make more money? To use, well, one of the things that I've discovered is the best way is to do it on a shoestring budget. So have no money and have to be resourceful enough to find ways to, to earn money, right? So I don't like to use the word make money because that was another thing that I discovered was sometimes in your manifestation or in your prayers or in your thoughts, whatever you want to call them in your mantras, I don't know what religion and I'm not trying to bring religion, but I'm talking about your brain is a computer. It's a, it's a super powerful manifestation tool uh, at, at times if you use it correctly. So if you, if you're saying, how do I make money? That's incorrect from what I discovered by someone who mentored me. You say, how do I earn money? Cause you don't, you don't make money. You're not, you're not the federal reserve. You're not sitting there printing money on a press. So you're looking for ways to earn money. So if you're someone looking for ways to earn money, you need to be manifesting ways to earn money. And that, that, that's what I think that helps a lot more than trying to say that you want to make money.
Chad says, where's your doggy, bro? Okay, yeah, so I had a dog uh, that I had for six years, seven years. And uh, when, I was, when I first left out of Hawaii um, for a month, he was staying with my friend. And my friend said, uh, you know, if you want, you can keep traveling around the world. Um, but, uh, and, you know, and I was like, well, I can't because I have my truck, I have my house, and I have my dog. And he said, well, I can take care of all three of those for you. He was, he was an old man. He was like 70. And I said, uh, I said, I can't get rid of my dog. And he said, are you sure about that? I said, yeah, no, I can't get rid of my dog. I've had him for six years. And I kept traveling because I was trying to, I was on discovery mode. I was, I felt like I was an explorer, you know, like I had, I had some oats to sow. I needed to get out there and explore. And, um, as time went by, he said, Hey, just to let you know, I actually, have someone who would adopt your dog they have a female pit bull and they get along great would you would um would you mind if they went there or your dog went there and i said wait a second so i i, I drank a beer and i thought about it i was like okay so my dog is a female pit bull and he can live with a family in hawaii and i'm already gone and i'm traveling i was like that's a perfect fit so they adopted him He's trying to f find a roommate to cut costs. Yeah, finding a roommate to cut costs is a great thing. You can look on Craigslist. Just make sure you don't end up with a crazy, right? <laughs> or someone that you can get along with. I think roommates are a good thing to save money for sure. Are you traveling to find a place to ultimate live place? Well, so right now I feel like I've got to travel the world. Why I feel that way? I don't know. Like, you know, sometimes you just get this calling and you're like, I got to do this. Like right now I feel like I have a calling to like travel the world. Sometimes I even wonder, I'm like, am I supposed to be a diplomat one day? And part of being a diplomat is I, in order to be a diplomat first, I have to walk among the commoners first. And then, and then the next thing I go there and I'll be like shaking hands with Xi Jinping and Shinzo Abe and Vladimir Putin. But I, instead of being a commoner on the streets, I'll at least have the knowledge of what it's like to be a commoner. That's just a big lofty like thought. That's like a dream, right? Uh, not necessarily it's even a dream, but that's like, is that why I have this or is it something else? Is it because, because why else would you have this like international thing? Well, when I was in college, the only class that I like got a 100% in, only one class, and I don't get 100% was in foreign relations. So I've had this kind of calling to foreign international relations uh, even before college, but it was solidified by college. And so I kind of feel like being that I'm a political science degree, that there could be something there uh, in, in some sort of diplomacy. Uh, yeah, island fever for sure. I mean, you can't, if you, if your family's not there, you're going to get bored. Um, if your family being your wife and kids or your family being your uh, intermediate, immediate family, uh, living in Hawaii, you will get bored. Even if you surf and do all that crazy stuff, you will get bored. <laughs> Chad says, cheers from Cocoa Beach. Yeah, I, that's that's right. I, I use my travels to make videos. I'm always making videos and sharing them with people because people want to see what it looks like. Like one of the things that I do now is I just walk with a hand stabilizer right through the city so that people can see what it would look like and feel like if they were actually there because that puts them right in the perspective to maybe even feel more comfortable. So I don't have to do all this crazy editing where I'm like music, jam party, you know, dance, dance, dance. People just want to see what it looks like right there on the street. As far as my ultimate place goes for travel, you know, I was telling my friend today who lives in Maui, she uh, she's kind of bored on Maui also, but she's also working down in Kalanapali. And I was saying, uh, well, you know, she's like, I'm just kind of over Hawaii already. And I'm like, yeah, I understand. I was like, well, have you ever heard of Australia, New Zealand? I mean, she doesn't want to move back to the United States because she's tired of the United States. She doesn't think that's a, she said it's yuck is what she said. It's, it's, and, you know, I, I admire the United States, especially, you know, when you travel alone in foreign places, you know, you, you get um, humbled very quickly. And uh, there's certain times where you might be like, oh, I want my mommy back. Mommy or Uncle Sam, right? You know, you, big brother you, you're like sometimes sometimes you might be in a situation where you're like well the united states protect me you know um 
especially that's humbling, you know, because the United States is such a free country and, and it does have a history of taking care of their people. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Australia and um, New Zealand are some really interesting places. I've been going to Mexico lately and I really love the people and food. It gets a bad rap. Could see myself living there one day. Hey, man, where are you going in Mexico? I have not been to Cabo San Lucas, but I'm starting to really like like the idea of Cabo San Lucas. Not necessarily saying that I'd live there, but I also was taking a look at Acapulco. But then someone said, oh, it's the most dangerous city in the world. And I'm like, you mean it's more dangerous than Syria? Well, what is it? What's the Damascus? <laughs> you know, so I was like, OK, that's kind of crazy. Am I ever coming to Florida? Yeah, I am actually. I don't know when. Florida is one of those places I would go in the wintertime, like the Caribbean and stuff. Right now, I, my intentions are northern places, especially as we go into the uh, uh, summer. Like I wouldn't go to Shanghai, Tokyo, or Beijing in the, in the wintertime because I tried that before and it was just too cold to really enjoy the place. Shibuya, he uh, he actually, you should check out his YouTube channel. He's on this chat, but he actually lives here in uh, Tokyo. So I'm going to meet up with him tomorrow. Seattle, Washington is great in the summer. Yeah. Oregon, Seattle, it's beautiful. I, I took the Amtrak from San Diego to Seattle. And when I was going, right when we got up into Oregon through uh, Salem and all that, oh, man, the rivers, the, the grass and the rivers, it was just like, it's like heavenly. But I was there in Oregon in March, February, March. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like the, the Columbia River was like looking just really muddy. And no. Nah, but April, springtime, Oregon, Seattle is beautiful. Clearwater, Tampa, in the house. It's great. Gray and raining in PDX, which is Portland. The weather gets nice on July 5th. Ah, uh, yeah, I would love to see Portland in the on the 5th. There was a city I went to in Portland that just seems so amazing. I forgot what it's called. Um, I think it's called Sea View. I'd like to see that place in the summer. Aloha, State of Mind says he's been going to Puerto Vallarta. I know you went there. Sayulita was nice, but the gringos kind of turned it into Southern California. Where is Sayulita? Sayulita. I've never heard of Sayulita. Seaside. Yeah, Seaside, Oregon. I, they have this like roundabout with this American flag that looks like right out at sunset. That was phenomenal. It, it looks like, though, like that place used to be a boom town, and then like the economy or the recession must have got to it because it kind of looks run down, but it looks like it could have a heyday. Seaside, Oregon. They should renovate that place. Like, if there's one thing that, never mind, I'm not going to say anything. I was going to say make America great again. But there's a lot of infrastructure deficiency in the United States. And places like Seaside, Oregon, could stand to benefit from a make America great again kind of uh, renovation. But instead, they'd rather go build a wall, which I don't know about that. But I'd rather them, you know, pump some pump some life into some of these urban areas in the United States. Smart cities are a big thing. I mean, in uh, Singapore, they have all these smart cities, right? And um, Tokyo is even kind of a smart city. Uh, Shibuya says, Shibuya Republic on Instagram. For those of you who are going to go to uh, Tokyo, you should hit him up. For real, hit him up. Sayulita is about one hour north of Puerto Vallarta. Used to be a small fishing village. Surf break is similar to Waikiki. Oh, that is awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. Is it safe? There's a place, there's a couple places on the inside of the Gulf of Mexico that I got that I want to check out. So obviously there's Cabo and then there's the Pacific. But if you go on the inside where they got the whale sharks and all those whales that hang out in there and all those big sea, sea mammals and the Gulf of Mexico, not the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Cal, the Baja California is what it's called, I think. Warm water. You got whale sharks. You can swim with whale sharks. Like you could swim with whale sharks in Cebu. You can swim with whale sharks in Koh Rong or over in Thailand. But you you don't even have to go all that far to go swim with whale sharks. You can do that right in the Gulf of California. 
Um, but there's some, there's Porto Penasco, which is Rocky Point. You go down and there's a couple other cities right there that are pretty nice that I want to check out. DJ Pollywood, he said, I drove from San Diego to Washington State inland in 16 hours, but took three weeks to come back, taking the coast back down. I drove to San Diego. Wow, that's a long haul, man. That's. I hope you took the five because I took the, well, I, I mean, I hope you, whatever you did, you enjoyed it. But I, I saw the Redwoods in Northern California. That's a must see. Those That place is amazing. And I think his name was uh, the president. Was it Teddy Roosevelt? No, Rockefeller. Rockefeller declared the Redwoods as a national. Uh, he 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 preserved that place. Thankfully, I mean that that is an amazing place. But that was the main reason why I wanted to take the coastal route, which was slower than the I five. But if you go from if you take the I five from Washington to San Diego in 16 hours, you had to have been on the I-5. There's no way you could have done Washington to San Diego on the on the Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> Mazatlan. I I gotta check out Mazatlan. But if next time I go back to Mexico, I'm going Gulf of Mexico and I'm gonna do the Caribbean. So I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna do the Pacific Coast. The next time I go there, although I am due for Acapulco, Costa, or, uh, Cabo, like I was telling you about the Gulf of, Ca the Gulf of California. Also, um, so you got Mazatlan. Yeah, I, I don't know. Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, Acapulco. I mean, Bill and Hillary Clinton got had their honeymoon in Acapulco. So, I mean, I don't know if that's saying much. Same latitude as Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Five going south, then PCH back to San Diego. So, oh, five going north. Five going north. You know, the PCH, they actually, we were, we were, this, this sucked. We were going from uh, Monterey down the PCH. We got past Big Sur. We got to that Julia Pfeiffer uh, State Park where that waterfall is. And we started to see that there was like these signs where, you know, I usually you, you go to Hearst Castle after you get past Big Sur, like not too far after you get to Pismo Beach. It's closed. So the, the PCH is closed right now. Did you guys know that? Pacific Coast Highway is closed from like Big Sur area to, to like where the Hearst Castle is. Oh yeah, San Diego at the Bali Eye and uh, Mission Beach. I used to live in. I used to live down there. Mark says yes. Big landslide about six months ago. Yeah, wow. I mean that California. That's that's why people say California is falling in the ocean. I was watching this one video, Chopper Five or whatever it was, uh, Chopper Seven in Los Angeles. They were flying. They have, they have these like mansions, like big pools, right? Pools, pools. I don't know. Can't talk. Pools. <laughs> they have pools right on the cliffs, right? And they have these mansions, and the cliff is sitting there just crumbling. And Chopper Five or Chopper Seven or whatever it is, ABC Seven, flying over as the as the bottom of that cliff is just like falling into the ocean. And we're talking like 150 foot sea cliff. I'm sure the guy the guy who built it or the girl who built it, maybe it was a girl, it doesn't matter. But whoever was building it, I'm sure they thought, hey. Well, this has a this has a shelf life of maybe uh, thirty years. You know, I'm sure they didn't think that it was going to happen as quick as it did. But you know, some of these places are falling straight in the ocean. Santa Barbara's under the same threat. I went to Slipknot shows on the West Coast on that ride on the, their first tour. Did you guys go to Coachella this time around? I've never been to Coachella or Burning Man, but I I hear just I mean I see that I, Coachella's just turning into something else. Same with Burning Man. Thing is, they don't let cameras in Burning Man, so you don't actually get to see what it's like. Aloha, state of mind. I watched you Waikiki Beach video, and I could see that the sea level has risen drastically over the last 10 years. Yeah, there's that seawall, right? So you take the take the seawall half, and now it's like it's even broken off now. So sea levels are rising. I mean, some senator in the United States government from Georgia was trying to say that 
Oahu is sinking. <laughs> People say that. I don't, it could be. I mean, is Oahu sinking? It, or is it eroding? I mean, that's, that's kind of the direction we're going with that. What's what's the story, guys? Is it, is, is Hawaii sinking? Because if that's the case, then every one of you guys should be going to the Big Island. Because that thing is just like four big mountains, four big volcanoes. And it's lava. <laughs> that ocean cannot eat away that lava like that. Not to say that Oahu and all these others aren't, but. Yeah, there's, there's some real crazy stuff that's been happening. One of the things you have to do when you go to Hawaii is talk to someone who's lived there for 50 years, 35, 50 years, 35 years, doesn't matter. You know, a local, right? Born and raised. Ask them. Say, hey, tell me how this used to look 40, 50 years ago. One of the interesting things that I found when I was in Kihei, okay? So Kihei, when I first moved there, I, I noticed there was a couple, like, stanchions in the water that went way out there where a pier used to look, or it looked like there was a pier. Well, it had gotten taken out. I don't know if it was from a tsunami or what, but there's a couple areas like that. But then I found out during World War II, the U.S. US military used to train in Kihei and all that area right there. And um, those beaches are actually man-made, like Kamaole and all that. Those were amphibious assault landing training areas. And if you go kind of hidden behind all the bushes, because, you know, there's like those trees that grow over like the, um, what is it called? Lumpaka trees. Lumpaka tree. I forgot what it was called. But those trees, um, right behind it is like this, this commemorable, this commemoration that's, that states that um, there's like pictures of like the amphibious assault ships and how it used to look. You can even look it up online. Uh, World War II training ground in Maui. I didn't know that, so I found that to be interesting. All the sand in Waikiki is shipped in from Australia. I wonder what beach. I did not know that. Yeah, Australia is just a phenomenal continent. I mean. There's that Whit Sunday beach. There's so much sand right there. But the environmental disaster that's happening on the the, uh, the the Great Barrier Reef, I wouldn't be surprised if Fukushima is playing a factor in that. Because, I mean, I was even talking to some people here in Hawaii or when I was in Hawaii about um, – they, they all seem to say the same thing. Ten years ago, it didn't look like this. And then they say it's because tourists wear sunscreen. But in the back of my mind, I was like, well, about eight years ago, Fukushima Daiichi radiation happened. So, but we can't get a clear story on that because no one will tell the, tell, the, tell the full clear story. So, anyways, guys, this has gone on for 38 minutes. And um, I don't want to keep you guys tied up or, you know, I'd probably going on a long time i hope you guys enjoy this if you enjoyed it if you could put the like up and uh yeah i'll read see you man all right guys see you guys later thanks for uh hanging out